there! In this week's video, we are going to be exploring a much requested topic from my subscribers, which is what is GitHub and Git and all of that, and how do I use it? So, my name is Kevin, and I bring you weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials on web design and development, mostly the development side so far. And as I mentioned, this week is actually a start of a series that's going to be taking a look at Git and GitHub. And this week's video is going to be exploring just Git and what Git is, because it's not actually the same thing as GitHub. GitHub helps us use Git, but before we get into the whole GitHub thing, it's important that you understand what Git is and how Git works. And then in the next video or two, we'll get into the whole GitHub thing. Before I get into all of that, though, I just have a couple of quick, quick things that I want to talk about. The first one is... Thank you to the 500 subscribers, or almost 500 subscribers, by the time this goes live we'll be really close to that, and that blows my mind because I really feel like we were just at 100 subs when I made a video for that, and we're already almost at 500, so thank you so much. And to follow that up, you might notice the lighting looks a little bit better in here, so I've gone and got a lighting kit, and I think it looks a lot better. I saw the channel growing, I had this really ugly background with shadows on it, and before that it was even worse than that. Uh, I do want to be on camera a little bit more often, so I thought it would be important to have some proper lighting so it doesn't look like some amateur hour while I'm doing these videos. So uh, this is for you guys. Keep on subscribing. Uh, I really appreciate it, and I wanted to show my appreciation by trying to up the video quality a little bit. I also think I figured out finally how to get the sound the same in all my videos, so that's good too. Uh, but with that out of the way, let's jump right into it and find out what the heck Git is. So Git is a form of version control. It lets us branch projects, merge projects together, fork things off, all sorts of weird words that we will be getting into and what they actually mean very soon. Um, but the basics of it is it keeps track of all the changes we've been making to files. It actually lets us roll back to any of those previous changes if we need to. And the branches thing, which we'll be looking at in a second, is incredible. It's really, it was a game changer when Git was released and it's why it's so popular today. The other thing with Git is it's really amazing for working on large teams because it makes sure that everybody can be working on their own files at the same time without having to worry about the changes the other person's making. They worry about their own changes and then they can bring their files back together into one main repository after. Uh, it's really awesome for that. So uh, I have some stuff ready. Let's jump into that so you can understand a little bit more of what I'm actually talking about. So Git lets teams of people work on a single project without having to worry about what other people are doing, and this is huge. Now if you're just learning HTML and CSS, maybe you haven't started working on a big project yet, but let's say you and me are working on a site together. You're in charge of updating some of the pictures, and I'm in charge of updating the text. So what we have on the screen right now is the master branch, and what the master branch is is pretty much the timeline. Uh, this is the start, this is where we are at the very beginning of the project, and as we make changes they're going to appear along here. Um, but the thing is, when you want to start making the changes, you don't necessarily want to put it on the live version of the website. You don't want it on the active project, because what if you make a mistake along the way? Or what if you make some changes and I make some changes that are different, and then it's going to get all muddied up? So what we want to do is, you're going to create what we call a branch. And this is you making a copy of the website. You're copying the whole website over to your own branch that's off here. So the master version of it is left untouched. The master is still exactly the same. The master hasn't been touched. The live version of the website is completely fine. You're coming up here. You're making your copy of the website. And then you make some changes to your website. So you're doing, you know, you're changing those pictures and you're updating them and doing whatever you have to do. And then you make some saves. So we keep track of it. Just like our master will keep track of all the things going on, your branch will also keep track of all the changes you make. So here's some of the changes. You go update it, all the pictures on the home page, save. Then you make more changes. So then you go and you go to the about page and you save all the changes there. And you go, okay, this is all my changes to the about page, save. You're done. Your job is done. All the list of things you wanted to do is done. So then you're going to go and put in a pull request. We'll get to the pull request in a second. But one of the cool things with Git is while you're doing all of this, I'm making my own branch. So I'm making my own copy of the website. I'm not copying your version where your pictures are going on. I'm looking at the master because the master is the version that's currently live and it's the version that's being worked on. You know, that's the one that's the most important because it's all been approved and it's all good. So I have this going on. 
Now you've put in a pull request. So you have these changes, they're ready to go. You want those to go on to the live version of the website now. With a pull request, generally speaking, if you're working in a team, someone else will be approving your pull request. You won't be approving your own pull request. Uh, but if you're working on a smaller project or you're working on your own thing, then you would have control and you'd be able to approve your own pull request. When a pull request is done, it's actually going to show you can compare the code of the current version and of your version and see, you know, just to quickly look and make sure everything is okay. And then it will get pulled in to the master branch. Now, while that gets pulled into the master branch, so now this is pulled in, it's active, all of your changes have gone live. I'm still working on my own changes and I can continue working on my own changes. I've updated the text on the home page now. I've updated the text on the about page and now I want to put in my own pull request. Now the cool thing here is because I was only working on the text, when I put in my pull request, it's not even paying attention to what you did with your images because I didn't touch those images. It's only looking at where the code is different. So where the code is different between my version and here is all the text that's been done. So it's going to see all the changes I've made, it's going to compare those changes, and then it can be approved and pulled in. If I made changes to the pictures too, it's going to know it and it's going to go, there's a conflict here. You changed a picture one way, I changed the same picture but I put something different. It's going to go, uh oh, we have a problem, there's a conflict. This conflict has to be resolved before the pull can be made. So that is cool. It keeps track of these things and it makes sure these things don't cause problems. Even if you change file names, it keeps track of file names and everything. So it knows if you change a file name, it's still the same file with a different file name. So it, it's, it's smart, it gets very intelligent. But in this case, I only change the text, you only change the pictures, we have no conflicts, the pull request is approved, and it jumps into uh, the live site as well. So you change the pictures, I changed the text, and it's all good. And this can even, you can even branch off of branches. So if you're working on a new big version of your website, maybe you have little things going along, you have a big version two branch that's going, and that version two will have its own branches jumping off of it here and there and all over the place. The other really cool thing with this is, say I pull this in and then we go, oh my goodness, we just made a huge mistake. There's a big problem with it. It's on the live site. It got approved, but there's, you know, I screwed a whole bunch of stuff up. Git keeps track of everything we've done. We can roll back to this version. There's no problem with that at all. Uh, and in fact, there should be a circle here and a circle here because you can even roll back to where that branch was created. So Git's really smart. It's version control. You can always roll back if there's any problems. You can have multiple people working on things without files having to worry about them conflicting with each other. It's a lot like having different people making, you know, file save as, and I have my own folder there and you copy your own folder, but it's keeping track of all the changes we're making. So when we go to push those folders together, we're not running into a whole bunch of problems. It's working without any issue whatsoever. So Git is really, really cool. And that's pretty much how Git works. But you're probably wondering where GitHub comes into all of that. So what we're going to do is in the next video, we're going to explore how GitHub helps us use Git and makes it a little bit more user friendly. Thank you so much for watching the video. I appreciate it. I'm happy you got all the way to the end. So if you have any questions or comments about what I've been talking about, please leave them down below in the comments. I'll get back to you. And uh, I want to just say that I'm going to be starting also a Q&A type video soon because I've started getting a couple of questions in the comments that are bigger picture. They're not, how do I do this in the code? It's more of a general concept or something like that. Uh, so starting this week or early next week, I will have my first Q&A video. If you want to have a question answered in that, by all means, it's I'm getting it from you guys. Um, so again, if it's if it's a bigger picture, you can leave it on this video or any other videos. I read every comment that you guys post, so I will see your comments along the way. Um, and yeah, thanks a lot. If you haven't already subscribed, please do consider subscribing. As I said at the beginning, I bring you weekly videos like this. They're posted every single Wednesday. Yeah, and otherwise, thanks a lot for watching and take it easy until the next video, guys. Ciao!